There we go. Hey, good evening, friends. Uh, welcome back to Voces Fuertes. A uh, virtual open mic meant to highlight the voices of, and talents of Latinx and BIPOC communities. I'm your host. My name is Andrew. It's so good to see you today. And if nobody has told you today, I love you and I will always love you. Uh, I just want to first shout out and say thank you to the Julia de Burgos Foundation and the Cultural Arts Center and to Cuyahoga Arts and Culture for ensuring that we have this time together, even amidst this craziness. It's so good to know that I have your support through this virtual space. Uh, we've got a rocking set for y'all tonight. I mean, our features for today include poet Gabriel, Gabriel Ramirez and one half of the band the Lunatic, Julio Rosa Sosa. Uh, we'll also be hearing some vibrant words from Juanita Valdez Cox, who is the executive director of Lupe, a communion, community union rooted in the belief that the members of the low income community have the responsibility and the obligation to organize themselves. And in the spirit of that responsibility, I'd be remiss to acknowledge that we are currently occupying stolen land. I am here with you virtually, but physically I am residing on Shawnee, Windowed, Ottawa, and Seneca lands known today as Cleveland. I would also like to acknowledge the atrocities that have befallen onto our Black community with the losses of Tamir Rice, Philando Castile, Trayvon Martin, Rihanna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Tony McDade, Rhea Milton, Elijah McCain, George Floyd, and countless others. The impact of their losses will stay with us all. And in, in recognition of them and the, the grief uh, that has befallen on our family in the immigrant farm working community, our LGBTQIA plus family, our friends of Asian descent who are currently being scrutinized by 45's racist allegations concerning COVID-19 and the countless communities of color who are currently struggling against the mass of racial injustices in the world today. I would please ask for you all to join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, tonight, I will be hearing from Alex Garza, Leticia Wilson, Alucia Stone, Yurisapi, uh, Juanita Valdez Cox, and our features, one half of lunatic Julia Rosa Sosa and poet Gabriel Ramirez. Uh, to kick us off tonight, uh, I'll be reading a few excerpts of my own poetry, and then we'll get right into our open mic set list. Um, this first poem I wrote uh, alongside some of my some of my students day in our last session of slam poetry writing uh, this one i'd like to call candle hope flickers and its fragrance tickles my nose like wax falling from my love handles onto hardwood floors there is a light until it's dark and i'm lost this next poem uh, is, um, I wrote it during our my time together with the Indigenous Cultures Institute. Uh, it's a cult, it's an institute and summer learning program with so with some of my students and some of my elders who we go through together and we teach our youth about indigeneity and their Kualutec and ancestry. This one is called Seattle. Se, one. The first time I looked into my grandmother's eyes, I saw Seattle. Ome, two. At second glance, I noticed something deeper. Ye, three. I saw inside of her eyes all of our relatives swimming, struggling against the atol, which means water. Nawi, four. The last time I looked onto my grandmother's eyes, I saw se, one, atol, water. Awesome. Well, 
Thank you. That's about my time for today. Uh, I am so excited for you to get to know and hear the words and be inspired by all of the amazing facets that make up these artists. Um, I would love to introduce our next, our next artist who's coming up. His name is Alex. Let's give a round of applause all the way from your couch or your living room to Alex. Take it away, my friend. Thank you. Uh, I'll be performing a piece from my one-man play called Coconut which I first performed several years ago. And uh, I've recently kind of been reworking it to perform again on stage whenever we can get back live on stage. And uh, so here's uh, kind of the last couple of scenes from that play. The most difficult part about going to college at a state was being away from the family. So I was excited to be able to visit everyone during the Christmas holidays. I was especially excited to see my grandmother. She had been sick for a while and I had this fear that if I didn't see her during the holidays, I would never see her again. Ay, mijito, venga aquí, quizá grandma. When I walked into the room, she was so excited to see me and it was hard to see her lying there connected to an oxygen tank. She seemed smaller, older, and she didn't seem at all like the energetic woman who was always screaming at me because I couldn't understand what she was saying. I wanted to cry, but I had to be strong because she was always so strong. Ay, mijita, mijito, como, como es la escuela? Um, bien, uh, estoy aprendiendo muchas cosas. Ay, que bueno, tu español, your Spanish is very good. Tu inglés, inglés es muy bueno. Over the years, we had learned to communicate a little better. She learned a little Spanish, I learned a little English, and there were so many things I really wanted to say to her, but I didn't know enough Spanish. I wish my parents had taught me Spanish when I was a kid, and now it just seemed too late. Es muy frío en su universidad? Uh, sí, muy frío. ¿Necesitas botas? Quiero comprar botas para ti. My grandmother was lying there ill in bed, and she was worried about how cold it was up north. She even, wanted me, she even wanted to buy me boots. I think I loved her more at that moment than any other time in my life. Tengo algo para ti en la silla. My grandmother raised her weary arm just a little bit and she pointed to a blanket on the chair. Es para ti. It was a blanket with, her, with a bear on it. <laughs> she didn't make, make it herself, but she wanted me to have it so I could stay warm back in college. Thank you. Te amo. Y tu abuelo te amo también. I looked over at my grandfather who was asleep on a chair in the bedroom. I don't think in my whole life I'd ever seen my grandparents leave each other's side. I knew they didn't sleep in the same bed for years. My grandfather hated me abuela snoring, but she knew the love was there. And there was my grandfather sitting there asleep, refusing to leave his wife's side. Cuando tu abuelo te llama, Coco, él lo dice no con odio, pero con amor. Recuerdes eso. Ok. Ok. My grandmother told me that my grandfather called me coconut out of love. She thought it was important to say something I needed to hear. And I did. When it was time to leave my grandmother, I leaned down once again so she could give me a kiss and she wanted to give me a hug, but she just didn't have the energy. And as I walked away, I knew I would never see her again. And I remember her last words to me. Cuidado. 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 I was up at school when my grandmother died and I couldn't make it down for the funeral. It, it broke my heart, but I couldn't afford to fly down. But I think mi abuela and I came to an understanding. And even though I couldn't be there, I was there with her in spirit. And to this day, I keep that blanket she gave me close to me at night. And it keeps me warm, it keeps me safe, and it keeps me abuela close to my heart. Cuidado, mi querido nieto. After my grandmother passed away, I felt like a part of me had been lost. I felt like I was slowly losing any connection to my Mexican-American heritage, to my identity. All my life, I'd been searching for the answers to who I really was. And there were so many questions I could have asked me abuela while she was still alive. Your grandfather is in the hospital. Two years later, I came home for part of the summer and 
my mom broke the news to me that my grandfather had been very ill and that he was in the hospital. Why didn't you tell me before? We wanted to wait till you were here so we could tell you in person. This couldn't be happening. We had lost my grandmother only two years earlier and now mi abuelo. I didn't know how to feel. I felt like there was a connection between me and my grandfather that had never been made. I could only say uh, two words to him when I was a kid. And now that I was an adult, I didn't see him that often and he was in the hospital and it didn't look good. And I felt cheated. I wanted to have the kind of grandfather that would tell me stories, that would take me fishing, that would tell me how proud he was of me. Most of all, I wanted a grandfather who would tell me who I was supposed to be. I didn't know how to be a Mexican American. I always hoped mi abuelo would show me the way. And then it was my 20th birthday. I was at home with my mom and my brothers and my sisters. My dad had been at the hospital visiting my grandfather. And when he came home, we knew my grandfather had passed away. And my dad stood there in the door. And my, mo my mother asked my father, Manuel, is he gone? And my father just nodded. And my mom gave him a big hug. And for the first time in my life, I saw something I had never seen before. I saw my father began to cry. His face filled with sadness and his eyes filled with grief. And he held on tightly to my mother as she wrapped his arms around him. And it was at that moment that I saw my dad as something more than a, just a father. He was somebody's son and he had just lost his father. And, and now my dad was a man with a broken heart. I was a pallbearer at my grandfather's funeral. And I remember walking with my cousins holding the casket and what an overwhelming feeling that was. I was proud to be walking with my cousin Cousins carrying me abuelo to his final resting place. And because he passed away on my birthday, I always use that day as a tribute to a great man, a strong man, a wise man, who didn't say a lot to me, but he sure taught me a whole lot. He taught me it was okay to be a coconut. No matter what anybody thought, it was okay just to be me. Gracias, abuelo. Tú estás en mi corazón para siempre. Y tú también, mi nieto, para siempre, en mi corazón, viva el coco. Viva el coco. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you for sharing. Uh, from one uh, coconut to another, thank you for sharing. That was Thank such you a so much for letting me share. <laughs> Appreciate Next it. Up, friends, uh, we've got um, we've got all we got a poet and an awesome poem. I'm so excited for you to hear some of her words. Next up, we've got Letitia Wilson. Letitia, come on up and share your voice with us, friend. Hello, everyone. Um, I am going to do two poems that are just going to kind of like flow into one another. Um, during this time, it's a lot that's going on. It's a lot going on in the world um, with the trans community, the Black community. Um, so I, I have purposely been trying to avoid to the re-traumatizing re myself with videos and, and taking stuff in. So um, I've really been focusing on love and also what it looks like within um, a relationship with someone who looks like those who are on the videos and things like that. So um, this piece is entitled In So Many Words. Yes, I like him, but that's it. I'm not spiraling, slipping, sliding, skipping down a series of stairways of sentimental emotions where the landing is love. When he's gone, I mean, yeah, I miss him, but that's it. I miss his slanted smiles and seeing him stepping and trembling, so I savor his scent and acts of seduction that leaves me trembling. I miss the feelings flooding forcefully from his firm embrace, fireworks flying at the sight of his face, full of a conservative curiosity and well, you know, but what? Like I said, I like him, 
but that's it. I like how his words wrap around me, warming my woman mentality with empowering declarations and inspiring determinations to be a necessity of this world. He's an intellectual and spiritual, capable of the impossible, a precious jewel and I'm the safe. Look, but I, I barely think about him like that. I briefly travel through thoughts involving his intricate and intriguing, inviting illustration called a physique. God got generous, gifting glory in this gentleman's gaze, gracious for utilizing his abilities in assembling and awarding individual to set my heart ablaze. His look accredited God with an accomplishment. But however, I'm not on him all like that. <laughs> I'm not navigating naively into a new, notorious nuisance named infatuation. I'm merely mingling while marveling his marvelous masterpiece of masculinity. Moreover, his manly manner masters my membrane, mystifying and mesmerizing multiple members of my morals. Momentary moments makes monumental marks molded forevermore inside of me. Okay, okay, I love him, but I can never tell him. I refuse rushing, regretfully rambling, rapidly reporting that love has risen in me when realistically love is redundant. It reserves no remorse. Ruining reasoning roots, ricocheting rigorously, destroying dreams and devotion, deceitfully demolishing divinity. I can't tell him because I can't. He couldn't capture the captions concerning me. Circumstances conflict my classification, yet I crave to be the culprit, creating a, a climax of conflagrations in his core. But love steals your senses and I don't want to be senseless. I crave to be shown serenity, the shades of shared secrets, the shining of significance to be smothered and soothed in softness, shaped into a spectacle love specimen. I like him is compelled to be spoken, but fear conceals love in the silence. Cause love is difficult for me. It's easy to give, but difficult to receive. The first time my man told me he loved me, I asked, how will you torture me? My light skin has brown wits from the lashing due to the allowance of that word to slip. It has ripped into me, attempting to drown me, waterlogging, disorienting me. But I remember vividly what accompanies love with me. See, my mother told me she loved me and her mother told her the same, but neglect replaced love quickly when a man said her name. She believed loving me was giving the picture of a family, but no man loved both her and her seeds. They wanted the flower's head, but not the stem. She often faced the question, them or him, and society made her a statistic that she hated to be. She believed she loved us so much that she could try to love again and try to love again and try to love again, man after man, so that we could be better. But all of her heart, I can never get from her. Her love was teaching me inadequacy. My mother was tortured and she turned to do the same to me. I believed unknowingly, but she was starving me, removing my security because at any point she could choose a man over me, but maybe you will be more like my father. In the past, I loved the reflection of him in other men and maybe I'm falling in that trap again. Will you grip my neck, cutting me off from you, from life, from air, abandoning me without a care. I hold his DNA and I never ever love. He never loved me. So how can you stay? Black man who I love, how would this love torture? Beyond the family history and usual heartache and intimacy, how will you torture me? Will it be fear of losing you? Fear when you are driving, fear when you are sleeping, fear when you are shopping, fear because targets on our, both our heads. The news station showed a man killed who looks like you. I tried to avoid, but it's reoccurring. Sometimes I look at you and your face begins blurring and you look like the ones killed by black men, police men, white men, men, and I know systematically this all came to be. Are you conscious enough to love me? Am I conscious enough to receive it, secure enough to believe it? Black women are mostly fetishized and victimized and traumatized, then rejected because the weight of our pain is too much to attempt to romanticize. Everyone loves a black woman filtered. Remove pieces of her so that she's easier to tolerate. Don't show your anger, don't show your hurt, don't show your knowledge, don't declare your worth. Will your love torture me with censorship, prohibiting me from authentically being free? I want to love you and be loved by you, but are you strong enough to love me post-trauma? Am I for you? 
Can we force a new system? Begin the revolution in our bedroom, intimacy with words, penetrating the pain given by our family, ex-lovers, society. I believe you love me. And so I am questioning, what would it look like? What does it feel like? Can we be the ones to heal our ancestors, to exemplify black love against its attackers, to alter the phrases taught systematically, black women are too much, black men are nothing, black families don't exist. He responded with a kiss on the forehead, looking deep into my eyes, seeing the young girl who was abandoned, the woman who was brutalized, seeing hope mixed with fear. He leans in and whispers in my ear. We do not always know exactly how to be revolutionary. What one action will change it all. We just know when the revolution is necessary. You feeling and being loved is necessary. Being and feeling loved is necessary for me. Let's shed light on it on. Expose the scars and the smiles. I will not torture with my love. I will relieve. Let us allow our love to be revolutionary. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your voice with us. Oh man, tugging at my heart. Thank you for that. Um, next up, we have Lucia Stone. So Lucia Stone, if you're there with us, please come and share your voice with us. Hello everyone, how are you? Um, I'm gonna be sharing with you three poems that I wrote while living in Cleveland. I lived there for 10 years. And um, when I heard Alex's um, parts of the play, he touched my heart too. And he said, how to be a Mexican American. And that is not easy, you know? So the first poem is called Mariposa Libertad. Mira, look, what a beautiful mariposa with a soul of its own. Me encanta, me inspira. Such beauty subjugates me to the point of no return. The mariposa has no language, no race. Es universal, multicolor, and has only one faith, libertad. One day, I want to be a butterfly. The next one, it's, it's called Bilingualism. Mi mundo es per perplejo, complejo e inusual. Y yo no paro en comunicar, yo no paro en gritar, yo no paro en cantar. ¿Qué cuál idioma se habla hoy? No importa, inglés, español. Concurso. Y no renuncio a mi complejidad, a mi inusualidad. No renuncio, pero suspiro, suspiro con serenidad. One language, one heart. Two languages, two hearts. Two souls, two melodies to dance. Dos voces, voces dos vidas que no se comprenderán y me asusta, me espanta mi solemnidad. A veces, cuando quiero escaparme, ya no puedo más. And the last one is called Aquí o Allá, Here or There. Salsa, margarita, and tacos, por favor. A Big Mac, Milche, and a Coke, please. La influencia latina, the American way. Cancun, Los Cabos, and Puerto Vallarta, too. Los Angeles, Chicago, y New York también. Vámonos pal norte. Let's go down south, where son and tequilas are going to be found. Trabajo y justicia, vamos a buscar. 
Gracias, señorita, my MasterCard. What? Mi número de seguro social? That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucia. Thank you for sharing your voice. Thank you. Thank you. I love to do this. <laughs> we love having you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, next up, next up, we got Yurasapi. Yurasapi, come and share your voice, friend. Imanaja Mashikuna Ajituta. Good evening, friends. How are you? Nyukaka Yurasapi Mi Kani. My name is Yurasapi. I'll be sharing a um, poetry book with you today, and there are illustrations, and I wanted to be able to share the illustrations with you on this um, open mic night. Um, I have my poetry books, this book and the other two that I shared with you in past open mic nights available on my website, which is yudasapi.com. And um, yeah, this is a uh, series that includes excerpts from different books and um, the illustrations are, are what I, I also wanna highlight. Yurasapi means in Quichua roots of the tree or white root, raíz del árbol or raíz blanca. Yes. So start off with this, with this one here. Hold up a flame up to your soul to find the, an excerpt from Poemas del Alma which um, I'm working on releasing soon for you all. Feed the soul, appease the brain, warm the heart, take my hand into the light, transcend your worlds and break your binaries. And this was an excerpt from Love Poems for Healing, which I performed at the last um, Voces Fuertes open mic. Feeling like fire, flickering, flaming, afraid of being burnt out, left to death, and a slow transcend into ashes, having another impending rebirth. From Age of Aquarius. This one you also may remember from last uh, time, if you watched. Time isn't linear, connections happen for a reason. There's a reason I am here where I am. So bask, indulge, refuel in the happenings of now, the happenings of past, which will guide the future, which is also really the past. From Love Poems for Healing. Cold things turn us off, warm turns me on. Spiritual healing is hard when your temperature is paralyzed. From Poemas del Alma. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to fill someone's shoes that have already been worn in and maybe even worn out. From Age of Aquarius. Maker, creator, not destroyer, lover of lifting, reaching higher vibrations on track for greatness, in track, in greatness. From Poemas del Alma. I'm on a quest for liberation, decolonizing myself and the spaces I'm in. From Poemas del Alma. 
unsettled, unclaimed rage lingers in the mind, body, and soul, awaiting for it to be seen, heard, felt, claimed, settled. From Love Poems for Healing. To feel fresh and warm and free is like bathing in a natural water springs warmed by the temperatures inside your volcano. From Poemas del Alma. Last night in purple paradise, first day of a long distance relationship, sunlight and salt water healing wounds of the mind, body, soul. From Poemas del Alma. Got to be strong for those hard moments. Got to will it, got to give it. From Love Poems for Healing. Grounded in gorgeous green, verte en verde, como la Pachamama in full bloom. From Poemas del Alma. Your soul of serenity, a window to my heart, brings me so much of what I want in myself. From Poemas del Alma. My soul is hungry for you. From Poemas del Alma. And last but not least, cut off the cord, imaginary but impenetrable, Blow the candle out, turn off the light to see with your soul. From Poemas del Alma. Yupai Chani, thank you. And again, you can find my work and you can check these illustrations out even more at yurasapi.com. And um, yeah, I hope you have a, a great evening and enjoy the rest of these Amazing performances. You by Chani. Thank you. Blow out the candle, turn off the light to see with your soul. Things that I'm going to keep with me. Thank you, Yurasapi. That's yurasapi.com, y'all. All right, next up, we've got uh, Bree that's going to share some words with us. Come on, Bree. Uh, come on and share your voice. Hey y'all, this is Bree Shani, B-R-E-E-S-H-A-N-E-E. -E -E. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Just had to come through, share some words if that's okay. All right, um, the name of this is Ale House Damsel. <clears throat> I am not leaving this bar alone. I'm newly single and tonight, I don't want to hold myself. I'm all too good at loving myself, loving on myself, loving with my whole damn self. But tonight, I won't be the castle, the dragon, and the hero. Tonight, I'll be the mission. I'll be damsel. I'll be rescued. Tonight, I will be pulled from my loneliness, swept off my feet, held by a stranger, named him or her my hero. Grant them benediction for my existence. Tell them you saved me. Come claim your trophy. Do not use words. Let I cascade my curve. Let voice avalanche my defenses. Make hands riot my temperature. The scent of cologne compelling me. Turn me prey. Devour me. Gently say please. Say thank you. Remember manners when addressing a queen. Tonight, I will be fucked royally. It will be nasty. It will be deep. It will be so damn hot and ungodly that the devil will redesign his lair to emulate this room. There will be blindfolds and rope. This is what victory feels like. And it's still being earned. I'm giving thanks. Desolation is ejecting from my body. It's slippery. It's sticky. I'm giving thanks, fulfillment now pumping through me. It's clenching, it's hard, it's because I was saved and I'm giving thanks as I should. Am I not 
honorable? Am I not giving? Soon I will find my rescuer, grant them gratitude, allow them access to my land of milk and honey. Until then, I'll be in the bar, sipping this crown apple royal and cranberry juice, awaiting the king to find his way to me through this sea of court gestures and charm his way into this loneliness. Convince me to deem him worthy. Thanks. Thank you so much, Bree. All right, next up, we got Clarity. Clarity, come on through and share your voice. Hey, can you see me? I didn't know I was so soon. Let me turn this, this meat off. Can y'all hear me? Am I hearable? Yep. Yeah, I can hear you. Cool, cool, cool. So um, this first this first poem, I'm Clarity Levine, uh, Clarity Lewinsky, Clarity the Boss, Clarity the Hair Juice with Barbie, um, the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Like I go by that too. Uh, this first poem, it's funny because I actually haven't done this um, in a while, uh, especially with this current climate. So I guess I'm gonna see how I feel about it. It was one of my favorite poems before certain things started happening. So I'm gonna see how I feel about it. Um, let's do it. Spoiler alert. In this poem, the black boy lives lives to get called another ain't shit from a baby mama with the salt of his balls still fresh on her tongue lives to win another dice game lives to drink another fifth of hennessy lives to fuck another bad bitch lives to be his grandma's favorite his mama's baby the cousin with all the good weed the fun uncle the fine friend i just might lie in this poem Suck away my misandry for the greater good. Bow down my feminism. Take a break from the fact that the black girls face the same problem. If not more, don't get it twisted. That will be my next poem. But in this poem, we gonna talk about the black boy. And in this poem, the black boy lives. At the return to that club, you know they be shooting at. At the being shot at. At the shooting back. You call it controversy. I call it it be like that sometimes. It's life. He lives. At the robbing that corporation. That restaurant, that register is a victimless crime. They'll be all right in this poem. The black boy gon' be all right. Go win the fight and nobody calls the cops in this poem. It won't be no cops. No names to make sure that we spell correctly and our little poetry books are pronounced correctly on our microphones, these black boys. Do all this dying in these streets, in this world, and they gotta die again in these poems. They gotta die some more. Like they ain't dying for the last time. Like we ain't suffered enough. Why y'all keep dipping y'all paintbrushes in pain? Can't paint no pretty pictures? No art imitating life or life imitating art? Cause art too busy imitating death, but it's not my easel after all. And y'all can have y'all gradually agree, but first in my painting, in my portrait, in my poem, the black boy lives. And it's not even just a black boy I like. It's all my ex-boyfriends and all the niggas that played me. It's the one who said this lipstick is too bright for my skin. It's the one at the bus stop, all musty and ashy, asking me for a hug in my poem. Black boy ain't living for your comfort level, neither. He angry, he off, he awkward, he ghetto sometimes. He think he better than you, ain't he right? He looks threatening. He self-medicates with substances that ain't no doctor prescribed because that's his body, his black body that suffered so many lows. He reserves the right to get high sometimes in my poem. Can't take the black boy nowhere. Because the black boy don't know how to be quiet. He speaks loudly, loves loudly, lives loudly. All his music is loud. The sun is beaming and it's like 90 degrees. So the black boy is like literally blacker than he normally is. This is a peak black boy poem where the black boy lives. And nobody had to die for me to talk about it. All right. So that's that poem. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna keep it in rotation. Yeah, it kind of felt weird with all the stuff that's going on, but uh, that's literally this is what I wrote it for. So um, I guess it's super relevant. Uh, so real quick, um, I have this other poem. It's a woman a poem I did for Women in World Poetry Slam, and I have a book uh, called Don't Pick the Flowers coming out that's about like women and sexuality and stuff. 
So this is a, a poem for that book and it's really important. And I hope it's hilarious because it was supposed to be jokes. You know the difference between prostitutes and drug dealers? Prostitutes can watch that crack and sell it again. What's the difference between soccer players and hoes? Soccer players have goals. What's the difference between a prostitute and a man jumping from a skyscraper? Gonna be a while before the man hits rock bottom. What's the difference between a Hallmark card found in a dumpster and a whore found in a dumpster? The Hallmark card meant something to somebody. You know the difference between an onion and a hooker? Nobody cries when they chop up a hooker. We all know the difference between a known sex worker's murder and a fatal car accident. Cops investigate car accidents. Car accidents get recognized as tragedies. You want to know the difference between a slam poet and a woman who sells pussy? Audiences usually know when a slam poet is standing right in front of them. Thank you for your time. Clarity Levine, Clarity Lewinsky, Clarity the Boss, Clarity the Ninja. Bye. I'm gonna get back to this spaghetti. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your voice. Thank you, Clarity. All right. Next up, uh, I wanted to give a little uh, intro to our next friend. Uh, so next up, we have uh, Juanita Valdez Cox. So Juanita is the executive director of Lupe, a community union rooted in the belief that members of low income communities have the responsibility and the obligation to organize. Uh, so Juanita, can you come and share your voice with us? Hello. Hello. Good evening. This this will be different, but um, equally equally uh, equally important. I'm going to share with you um, two of the very important issues that our organization is working on. I'm sure that most of you have heard of the census, and I I hope that most of you have gone on and um, counted yourself. You know, we, we um, here in South Texas, this is actually, let me tell you, this is where Andrew came from. Andrew um, was born here in this area and lived here until he moved up. Well, he went to Austin and then moved up to Cleveland. But I, wanted, I want to um, share with you a little bit of our area. South Texas is at, is at the tip of the uh, Mexican border. We are connected to Mexico. A lot, this is, has been like ground zero for many of the issues that you may have heard on national news. If you have heard about the children that were taken from their parents, this is where that was happening. If you have heard about the, um, the issues of, of uh, street lights in colonias, colonias are like very rural subdivisions where most of the immigrants and low income families that live. We work with those families. We work so that in their, in, in their subdivisions or colonias, as we call them, they have the right to be lighted at night. Many of those communities are dark and therefore uh, a, lot of, a lot of safety issues that go on when, when they, this, this areas, these colonias are not, are not lighted. Uh, we also have the issue here of the, uh, like right now, that it's a hurricane season. This area is where immigrants live, where low-income families live. It does not take a hurricane. It could be a two days of hard rain and they don't have um, the drainage, adequate drainage. Now you may think that I'm talking about a third world country. I am talking about the United States. I am talking about Texas. I'm talking about the Rio Grande Valley, which is still for our south of San Antonio to give you an idea of how far south we are at. We have many, many um, issues that we, um, that we work with. Tonight I will share two of them. One, like I started off by saying, is the census. The importance of the census is that we, if we are not counted, our, our counties, your area, the whole United States, we, if, uh, if we are not cl as close to 100% 
in counting every single person that is in the United States. Our areas, especially like schools, lose the funding that it takes for um, the, the, the education that our children need. Our highways, those need that funding. Our communities that are low income need that funding. Uh, the healthcare needs that funding, but it happens because it's distributed by the amount of people, the closest to 100% that we can get. Now, the, um, because of the pandemic, the census has extended the registration date until October. So you still have time. You still have time to get counted. You still have time to work with others in your communities and, and, and tell them the importance of get, getting counted. Another thing that is very important to get 100% of the count is the fact that we base our congressional representative representation based on that number. We could have another congressman or we could have another uh, uh, state representative, right? But it all depends on the numbers. It depends if all of our family members from the, new, from the newest born baby to the oldest person in our household. And so I, I ask that you support and that you think about the importance of the census and you go online, it's really, really easy. It only takes like four minutes. You can just go to um, the us.census and you will find the application with which you can count yourself. The other one is that we have um, a major election coming up. You know that in November, it's a presidential election. Because of the pandemic, we are, we are um, fighting, we are working. Well, you know what? Let me go back to the census and tell you one more thing that we had to do. I don't know if any of you remember, but um, this administration, this Trump administration wanted to add the citizenship question. They wanted to add the citizen, citizenship question to the census. We had to fight really, really hard to get, to get rid of that question. We, we the, our case, we were, the, our organization was a plaintiff in, in the census lawsuit. I had to go testify in Maryland that, that including this question in the census was just going to create fear in our communities, in our immigrant communities. It, it was just a really racist uh, in, um, question because there was no need, there is no need to ask that question on the census. We were very lucky, we, we, were, uh, we won. That question is no longer gonna be included in the census. So you can, with a lot of confidence and trust, tell the immigrant community not to be afraid that nobody will get that, nobody from the government will get that information to cre create um, cause and harm. So therefore, um, that was a really, really important victory that went all the way to the Supreme Court that we won. Um, so let me go on now to the November election. The November election, as you know, a lot of immigrants, you know, the, 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 the Black Lives Matter movement, the, the, because of all of this police brutality, all of this killings that are going on, these elections that are coming up are crucial, are critical, are very important. So I ask that you uh, talk talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, talk to your family, and make sure that they are registered to vote for the November election. You still have time to register. And then make sure that they got, get out and vote. What we do here in South Texas with Lupe, La Unión del Pueblo Intero, is that we have our list that is called Ven Con Ten. We each are responsible for taking 10 people, making sure that those 10 people are registered and that they get out to vote. We have suffered through this administration enough so that we don't need really to say, um, are you going to ask, are you going to go to vote? It should be in our minds, it should be in our hearts, it should be something that we are absolutely going to get done. We have, we've, got to, we've got to encourage, we've got to have the largest turnout of minority voters that we have ever seen in our history. And therefore, we really need to, um, to take this very seriously. 
To end, I would like to encourage you to take two actions. That, you know, at our at our at our at our um, organization, we we can tell you about the issue, but we always leave you with some a little bit of work to do. Here it is for you. I encourage you to take action by one responding to the census and making sure that you can get at least five others to respond to the census. The other one is remember to start making your list of your friends and your families and get them out to vote on November. It's never too soon to start working on our friends to tell them that um, they need to get out to vote. And the importance is that we are also supporting a lawsuit so that we can vote by mail when we go to vote. Because of this pandemic, we need to think that we need to encourage this government to allow us to vote by mail. You should not have to choose, no, but no one of us should have to choose between our health and our right to vote. So we need to vote and have, and have this government allow the mail-in vote. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. I know it was different, but you know that it was very, very important for us to do what we can to help our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Miho. Thank you so much for sharing that and giving us the importance to that. Thank you. Thank you for speaking to that. I think it's very important that we keep that in mind. And I think that in of itself is an artistic ask. So thank you yes. for sharing your voice with that. Thank you. So next up, um, next up, I would like to introduce uh, our one of our features, Julia Rosa Sosa. So Julia is an El Paso, Texas and Ciudad Juarez native, currently residing in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, upon graduating from the University of Texas at El Paso, uh, Julia has focused on projects that resonate with her Latinx community and has been a part of the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, Mojada Un Media in Los Angeles by Luis Alfaro as an assistant director. As an assistant director, she has also worked at Nav on Native Gardens at Cleveland Playhouse, assisting Robert Barry Fleming. She has worked as the lead director in the Spanish productions of El Tiempo en de las Mariposas and Marisol at Cleveland Public Theater. She was a dramaturg and artistic consultant for the stage reading of Our Dad is an Atlantist at Cleveland Playhouse. She is an alumni of the Chicago Directors Lab and a current Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center artist in residence and a Cuyahoga Arts and Culture Learning Lab artist. So let's give it up for Julia Sosa. Woo! Bravo! Hola, ¿cómo están? ¿Sí se ve todo bien? ¿Sí se ve? ¿Sí se ve? Perfecto. Okie dokie. Andale pues, antes de empezar. Honey. Ok, ahí está mi backpack. Okay. ¿Listos, listos, listos? Vamos a empezar. Little fingers moving fast, building crap. Tiny spirits cracking down in front of the force and light. People lying down, not because they want to, but because they have to. They have to. Standing at night to enter between walls to perform the same act. Trillion of times, repeating the same task. Their dreams start to die. But sometimes where their minds start to fly Their little fingers get trapped where juice start to splash The dry skin on the person on your right If you look closer on your device You may find a tear that escaped someone time When they were putting together your your gadget five your gadget five thank you kids thank you ladies for making the clothes i'm wearing thank you kids thank The clothes I'm wearing, la, la, la. Little 
fingers moving past, building crap. Tiny spirits cracking down in floor of the fluorescent light. People lying down, not because they want to, but because they have to. They have to. Standing at night to enter between walls to perform the same act trillion of times, repeating the same task. Their dreams start to die But sometimes when their minds start to die Their little fingers get trapped Or juice start to splash The dry skin on the person on your eye Thank you kids Thank you ladies for making the clothes I'm wearing Thank you kids, thank you ladies For making the clothes I'm wearing Thank you kids, thank you ladies For making the clothes I'm wearing Thank you kids, thank you ladies for making the clothes I'm wearing Love. Esa canción se llama Kids Esta nueva canción que vamos a interpretar se llama El Diablo Romantically unsatisfied, economically distressed This is how my list of complaints begin I work for the devil, I dance at his pace He braids my hair every morning when I wake And I go to work on the palm off of his hand And I dance on the palm of his disgraceful hands I twerk for the money I twerk for the change I twirl for the money I twirl for the change To Eat a crumb bite a lot, I can never be perfect I buy things I don't like just for this capitalist game I find when I don't want, I give no fucks but I pretend a lot Just cause I need something to live by And I go to work on the palm off of his hand and I dance on the palm of his disgraceful hands I twirl for the money, I twirl for the change I twerk for the money, I twirl for the change and I go to work on the palm of his hand And I dance on the palm of his disgraceful hand I twirl for the money, I twirl for the change I twerk for the money I twerk for the change <laughs> I smile when I don't want I give no fucks but I pretend a lot I give no fucks, but I pretend a lot I smile when I don't want I 
smile when I don't want I give no fucks but I pretend a lot I give no fucks but I pretend a lot to smile when I don't want <risa> bueno, nosotros somos Lunatic desde Ciudad Juárez, Chihuahua. Hasta luego, muchas gracias. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Julia and Lunatic. Uh, please check out their YouTube channel. It's amazing. Uh, next up, we got our final feature, <laughs> our final feature for the evening. Thank you so much, friends, for joining us and for being a part of our voice today. Our next feature is Gabriela Ramirez. So Gabriela Ramirez is a queer Afro-Latinx poet, activist, and teaching artist. He has received fellowships from the Con uh, Conversation Literary Arts Festival, Palm Beach Poetry Festival, The Watering Hole, Canto Mundo, and Kalu. Uh, Gabriel has performed on Broadway at the New Amsterdam Theater, United Nations, Lincoln Center, Apollo Theater, and other venues and universities across the nation. Uh, Gabriel was featured in Huffington Post, Vibe Magazine, Blavity, Upworthy, The Flama, and you can find his work in various spaces, including YouTube and in publications like The Volta, Winter Tangerine, Was Good, Drunk in a Midnight Choir, Vinyl, and in Manteca, an anthology of Afro-Latino poetry. Better American Poetry Anthology, What Saves Us Poems of Empathy and Outrage in the Age of Trump, and The Breakbeat Poets Volume 4, Latin Next. Gabriel, come share your voice with us. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Andrew, for inviting me to be part of this uh, with all of you. Um, it's been a pleasure just to like kick back and just like watch people share their art and their voices. It's been really incredible. Um, today's been a heavy day um, emotionally. So uh, I think I'll be um, sharing some work that's a, a little, I guess, lighter on my heart in a way, um, just because I don't get to really read them often or um yeah they're just um poems um so uh the poems i'll be uh reading today are poems that um are about loss uh grief uh familial loss um in 2018 i lost both my grandmother who i actually have right here with me you know mi abuela Ana, and uh my father um and they passed like three months apart um so a lot of the work has just been um just getting the words out i guess um and thinking about what comes after grief, right? Or what what happens during grief or where does grief take me, right? So um, I'll be reading some of those poems. So take care of yourselves. Um, again, thankful for the space and the opportunity to share my work um, in the times that we're in. Um, that shows us they don't want Black people to live, that they don't want people to be alive and safe. Um, so again, uh, thank you for the space. Um, This poem uh, begins with uh, an epigraph 
uh, from Nipsey Hussle, um, a West Coast rapper, icon, a trailblazer um, who was taken too soon and uh, he was murdered on my birthday. Um, and uh, this is a chain that my uh, that I inherited after my father had passed away. And um, the kind of chain it is, it's called a herringbone. Uh, so yeah. Too many chains need another chest. Nipsey Hustle. Herringbone. One for each of my parents, teachers and homies to call this drip memoriam. 24 inches when I say they on my heart, gone but never plated. Pay my respects by paying for the real chains for every obituary. Walk into a funeral home's stillness. Walk into a jewelry store's buzzing. My ancestors keep me shining. Started with Pop's chain, herringbone, broken clasp, dented. You see a flex, I see another coping mechanism. Retail therapy or how I let you know who blesses me. Shopping for their promised cliche halos. Wanting you to say grief looks good on me. What if their heaven is around my neck? Mantle of a man, sanctuary made from the least sanctified. I'm deep in my bag, I'm mourning. I keep my dead on me. And uh, this poem was the first poem I was able to write uh, in 2018 um, after uh, my father and my grandmother's death. Pop's dead four months. Remembering pops taught me to float on my back. Watching moonlight on my Delta flight after leaving Abuela Ana's casket with abuelos in Santiago, Dominican Republic. I'd be lying if I didn't feel their hands stacked in securing my neck and spine. I got this ease with grief. Cry all I need to, not all I want to. Deep breaths, cups brimming with water. I feel furthest from Abuelo. The God I had then inked the ancestors I have now. I keep baby's breaths for everyone I hold in the heaven of my brain, gorilla taped and lining the sarong my sister Monica gifted me. I tell you, if a flower could be a casket, my therapist helps me see I got things, things about family and consistency how love should have and should look. Everything isn't my fault. I love people to see what brilliant light love could have made of me. All I am is from grief, defense mechanism, joy and smile and laugh and dance and hope. Thinking about getting a baby's breath tattooed under my eye. Imagining how fresh it'll look every time I cry thinking about how it's been four months since Pops died and the four ulcers they found in Mommy's stomach the morning of Abuela Ana's viewing and how Mommy couldn't come to Santiago to see her parents be together again. I tell you, if death isn't what makes a family. Um. In Santiago, um, uh, my grandparents are in niches, uh, one above the other, uh, in the mausoleum. And um, the title of the poem is The Address uh, for the Cemetery. Cemeterio de la Trenta de Marzo. I can't say I haven't imagined life without them. Caskets challenge my strength more than any god. Abuela Ana's niche above abuelos through the narrow cemeterio. 
every tombstone of set of eyes studying the shake of my arms. Couldn't have we rehearsed this, the route at least, my first time on the island, my first time in the sun. Spare the rosaries, fill my hands with baby's breath. I imagine your life without me almost every day. Construct black marble pillars, waterfalls flowing into pools lined with gold. Each name blooms back into their body. Every reanimated love crafts the heaven of my brain. Abuelo shuffles dominoes, offers the seat, smiles at our ability to reach for each other and touch. Abuela Ana rubs his back and kisses the top of his head. It's always morning. Ever growing mausoleum, orchids sprouting peach colored where mommy will enter. I could hear her calling me by my father's name, Armando, him behind me, my arms and our hands cradling her into light. Imagination failing the living. Mommy still here, another room or island. No need for me to pen breath into her. Could list her hundred smiles, neither favored over the one she has right now. Let me witness wherever she takes her body, posing in gold, and write that. Cool. So um, I'm just going to read one more poem. Um, uh, so the herringbone poems are poems that act as portals for me to communicate um, with my ancestors, my deceased loved ones. Um, and so the first herring poem, the first herringbone I wrote was essentially and shared was essentially like the thesis or like, you know, talking about how the herringbone functions in a way. And um, I've never ended a set like this, um, but with my grandmother um, on my laptop, um, I think it's only right for me to um, not end my set, but um, say uh, goodbye um, with this one. Herringbone for Abuela Ana. You would always say, Vas esta triste cuando yo me muera. I would always tell you, No hables así. And you knew I meant to say, I will. And I do. I'd lift the lid of your rice pot, hoping for smoke, for rice for fourths, knowing you wouldn't say no to me. I was spoiled. How you'd laugh inside I me whenever you heard me scoop out more grains than you had asked. How you pronounced Carolina. How you pronounced Carolina. Carolina made arroz taste how a rose smells the tip of my tongue sliding down the roof of my mouth when I say, I love your cooking. You are always in the kitchen where you saw me grow. You are always telling me, levanta tus pies. Your death is the only one I'm at peace with. Where is your body? I put it there. Where are you? mommy's laugh. Thank you so much again, uh, Andrew, for having me. Uh, thank you again to all of the phenomenal uh, poets and performers uh, who came before me. Um, happy Pride, everyone. Um, our voices are important to share. And as much as the state as much as the police, as much as the government wants us to be docile and silent, we cannot afford to be silent. Um, Zora Neale Hurston said, if you are silent about your pain, they'll kill you and say you enjoyed it.
So let's not be silent, y'all. Let's fight back however we can fight back within our own means um, and support each other and use radical, radical love and tenderness to see each other through all of it. Um, thank you again for the space. Uh, thank you again for all of your time. Uh, have a blessed night. Thank you for that message. Thank you. I think that's a really important to share. Um, that this is just one of the many ways that we fight back, giving a platform for our voices to make sure that we're heard and that our pain is not dulled away into some silence, that we channel it into something positive. We channel it into voice our frustration. And I think most of all, as an example that we've seen today, we channel it into love, not only for uh, each other, right, but for the world of the people that need it. And in lieu of all of that, thank you so much for joining us today, friends. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and were inspired by some of the words, some of the acts, some of the acts of love and kindness, some of the acts of sorrow, some of the acts of sadness, and some of the acts of joy that you've seen here today. Um, this is Andrew from Voces Fuertes signing off. Um, if nobody has told you today, I love you and I will always love you. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed night. <laughs>